tuning in once again. I am Dr. Renee, the Assistant Pastor of Empowerment of Faith, and you are going to be blessed once again to hear Dr. Larry as we go into our personal development study. We want to remind you, if you have not already done so, be sure to subscribe and then also like and share. And then there's a bell in the upper right-hand corner that you can click just in case you want to be notified every time we come on. So thank you so much. And Dr. Larry, to you. All right. We appreciate that, uh, my queen and assistant pastor, Dr. Nate. We appreciate you so much and all the things that you do effectively. We appreciate that. And we're going to get right into our teaching. And we're calling this a personal development study, just like you have a personal trainer. You know, this trainer is dedicated to you, not to everybody in the gym, in the weight room. It's dedicated to you, uh, helping you to accomplish your goal that relative to your body and, and enhancing different areas of your body and making them better. So we, we have been uh, doing this over a year now. And uh, the format is not a religious type format. Um, those on YouTube, of course, you can send your questions in and we'll entertain your questions. We will deal with it. Uh, live um, relative to connecting dots. We don't debate with nobody at no time. We don't do that. Uh, we are dealing with truth. Now, one thing about it, uh, without the spirit of truth, no one can, un can understand truth. Truth must be original. It must, it can't be a rewrite. It must be original coming from the original source. Now, we're dealing with the word of truth. We're dealing with our fa heavenly father's word. And that word is his law that's embedded in his government, his precepts and his principles. So we are getting into this um, and sharing uh, the necessity of detoxing your belief system. We've been talking about detoxing a lot and is necessary, even physical. You know, a lot of people are becoming aware of of how important it is to detox your body, get all the toxins and the poison and the preservatives and all of that food that's been sitting in your gut for five to 10 years and five to 25 pounds of food sitting there fermenting, not going anywhere because of the amount of toxins that have been put in the body by eating bad food. Well, you know, there are religious strongholds that are fermenting in the belief system and that fermentation is producing a toxic influence that's controlling how people think and how people act. And when you see in scripture, and, and the word is warning, even the priests, the teachers, the leaders, about getting a drinking and intoxicating drink or being drunken and not making proper decisions, not leading the people right, he is talking about religious and traditional strongholds. He wasn't talking about alcohol, Jack Daniels, or Jim Bean. He was talking about religion, man-made religion, humanistic religion. There's this thing, whereas a lot of people like this, and this is, is going around more, and surprisingly or not, uh, it's in the belief system of a lot of educators and people who are wealthy and well-off and, you know, got a little sense, got a couple degrees. They, they don't got so smart. And when it comes to the word, they don't think you need a shepherd or a pastor, even though there are countless uh, 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 passages of scripture that is letting us know the father's mindset on shepherds and leaders and the congregation and the holy nation and the royal priesthood and how he have set things up. But people actually believe in that. They'll believe in that. That's what I call that food had been sitting in the religious, I mean, in the, 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 the belief system gut, five years, 25 pounds of food that's fermenting and is giving off this vile, toxic influence that's destroying uh, the vision of people that they should have relative to the Heavenly Father's creator vision for them. So when we approach uh, this particular uh, personal development training, this is what we are doing. This is what we are working on. And you really can't move any further in terms of health, feeling better, getting the inflammation out your body, getting all this stuff out that's foreign to the body. You, you can't get nowhere until you deal with that. It's the same way with, with the belief system. You know, the scripture said the father wants us to be saved, uh, be yet to Timotheus too, and in conjunction with that, 
come into the knowledge of the truth, not church creeds and doctrines and the mask way of doing things or the uh, Catholic creeds of the 19th century of Canterbury Church. No, no, not, none of that. Truth, truth. And as I stated earlier, uh, the Bible, which means books of books, was, was formulated. Sip, I'm gonna make. I'm a. I'm. I'm going to create my own words. Civilize. Y'all know what a civilize is. <laughs> you know. You know. A, a, you know what that is. Uh, by the Cat Universal Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. So um, uh, I'm talking to people who have been colonized by Rome, and many are yet colonized by Rome. You know. Because when it comes, let, let me give you this example. I'm going to prove it to you. Um, the word uh, Christ, the word Christ, all right, that's not an original word that could be traced back to Hebrew or kingdom definition of terms, the government of the kingdom definition of terms. That's an English word uh, that is a reflection of the meaning of a Latin word, Christus. All right. Now, the original word is Mashiach in the Hebrew. Yeshua, uh, a, a Mashiach, Hamashiach. Some people say Hamashiach, but it's actually Hamashiach. Yeshua, Hamashiach. Yeshua, the Messiah. Originally, that is his name, which denotes his destiny and purpose in the earth. Names does matter. All right. Mashiach. Uh, the word root word for anointing is in there. Also, if you put a pay in the middle of the spelling of the word for anointing, you have family. And you have, of course, uh, the English word Messiah. So the correct uh, translation, not transliteration for the word Mashiach is Messiah in the English. Everybody say Messiah. I think that's in the English dis dictionary. Messiah. It's in the English dictionary. It's an English word, and it comes from Mashiach. So you tell me why people are saying Christ versus Messiah. I'll tell you why. Because in the belief system, Rome, Caesar, is sitting in the belief system. And Caesar override even the correct translation in English for Mashiach, and you say Christ. I know you didn't know that. But we need to identify Caesar in the belief system along with Caesar's religion and the religion that Constantine was one of the chief forerunners in terms of establishing this religion in a culture and using a colonization principle that's uh, uh, affecting, impacting every person who stated to believe in Yeshua Messiah right now today as a product of believing the translation, the transliterations, the add-ons and the left, out, left outs that's in the Bible. Let me see. Because see, you getting offended now. And I just told you Bible means book of books. I just told you that the Nicene Council, Constantine led it. There were no Hebrews there. Holy Spirit was not there formulated and canonized the books that's in the Bible. They decided which books would be kept and which would be thrown out. Now, who are you to not write what the Holy Spirit said right? So that religious uh, 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 rock wilder got to come out of there. That's a rock wilder said in that belief system. And his name is Caesar of Rome. So as we get more into this, we need to start identifying these strongholds and the source of these strongholds and how that the colonization that Rome practiced is still ruling the world. And that colonization, those principles that Rome practiced were copied from the kingdom of heaven government principles of a colonization. Check this out. Uh, you know, everybody want to conquer the world. Everybody want to conquer the world. The Britain, the sun never set on Britain. And then when the queen died, God saved the queen. And that script said the father would have all men to be saved coming to the knowledge of truth. And he didn't mention no queen. 
but because of that 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 strongholds in the belief system people just moaning and whining and all that kind of stuff because they were yet under the uh whip of britain but all these other nations they would go out conquer land take the people and bring them back to their homeland and force them into labor and rule over them and make them second and third class citizens all right rome didn't do that they said wait a minute the greeks they went to alexandria in north africa and they learned some stuff from the africans down there about how to manage people and they wrote it down so when they conquered greece they kept all the books and they implement their thoughts into law and they adopted the kingdom concept of a colonization so when rome conquered a particular territory they left the people there they sent out different officials to govern and conform the people to roman law and roman culture and that was rome's territory without caesar even being there he still ruled that country they didn't bring them back to rome they left them where they were y are you catching this they were known as colonies and wherever a roman colony was caesar was there his law was there rome was just as much present as it was if it was located there physically geographically even though rome was in europe so rome wanted to conquer the world that's what they was trying to do but they were so successful and rome is still ruling because they took a principle of the kingdom government of heaven and implemented it in earth it's perverted ambassadors now check this out we are ambassadors the earth is a colony we are here to colonize the earth with the government, the laws, and the culture of the kingdom of heaven. That is the mandate. In Barashi 126, rule, he created mankind his image and his likeness to rule, to govern, to manage the earth. Barashi 215, called Genesis 215. He told Adam to work or tend uh, the place that he put him in in the earth. That word in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word abad. And when you study it out, studying each Hebrew letter word olivet, you will get this meaning. He said to Adam, take the vision that's in you that you see by being connected to me, to the government of the kingdom of heaven, and use those laws, those principles, those precepts, and colonize this earth and make the earth just like heaven. That's what he told him. You just see the English word work or tend. The Hebrew word abad is what's there. That's what he told Adam. That's the mission he gave them. He, he gave them authority in this territory in earth to colonize it. That's our mandate. Yeshua came back, went through the process he went through. Now we have been restored back in our position of righteousness. We have received our dominion back so we can rule, govern, manage, and colonize the earth with the vision, which is a revelation of purpose that's in us by way of us being born again and Holy Spirit living in us, governing us and conforming us to the image of the anointing. That's the Holy Spirit, the governor. That's the same thing those Roman officials did. They went out and they governed the people. They served them from their language, serving them from, served them from their fashion. The food they was eating, they ate like they ate in Rome. They dressed like they dressed in Rome. They act like they act in Rome. They talk like they talk in Rome. They had Roman law and the whole nine yards. In America right now, most court buildings, the older ones you go to, look just like a Roman basilica. Lawyers have to learn Latin. You will see Latin words in those court buildings. Why do you think it's like that? Rome is ruling still. America is an extension of Rome in law, in government, in religion, Roman universal church. That's what Catholic means, universal. And everybody is under 
the doctrines of the universal church. All right. That's enough there for you to go on that arable detox and get all that spiritual. So we're we doing a arable spiritual detox. <laughs> we're not doing a smoothie. We're doing an arable. This, 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 this word is going to hit all those vital organs, everything. We're cleaning everything out. So, I mean, people get offended. All I got to say is get offended, holler, and just, just sit down and get taught. I mean, if you want truth, you got a spirit of truth in you. So I just wanted to lay that down, that little foundation down. So we're going to get back in where we left off. Uh, we're going to go to note 21. We're going to review that and go to our, our next note. And uh, if I got a question posted in the chat, uh, I asked my assistant pastor to let me know because uh, I'm not fumbling around with that right now. If someone got a question about something, we'll definitely deal with it. Or you can ask it yourself and we'll also allow you to do that. So let's look at things. You have to look at things differently. You got to look at it differently. Look at the culture that has influenced everybody. I was mentioning this earlier. Influence is the ruling power uh, in society now. I mentioned this earlier. You go on YouTube or any social media platform, and if a person, based on the amount of followers they get, they actually can say a few words and shut a business down. And they have no ties to that business because of the influence now you want you want to get a lot of followers just just get half naked you know show naked pictures show your butt crack everything you got you know uh talk about immorality and validate sexual immorality do all this stuff you have a lot of followers you know or just sing sing be you know sing songs rap you have a lot of followers it's, it's not hard the danger of that is the in the the influencing factors and principles that's being applied for negative demonic agendas. That's why music is so powerful. It's not the music, it's the influence music has. People worship a person who worships Satan. And, and, they, and, and they'll have a picture on social media, half naked, saying I'm blessed. Okay, all right, I understand. I, I don't even, I don't, hey, I have no problem with it. That's somebody else blessing you. I want to thank God. I heard one uh, lady, um, she a secular singer, you know, half naked all the time. I thank the Lord, thank God for protecting me. She wasn't talking about the Father in heaven. And people, see, that's how simp simple-minded most minds are that has been just denigrated to that lower state through influence. Oh, see, she she say she a Christian. She going to heaven. She said, I thank God for protecting me. And she told you she performed by influence of a demon, dummy. I mean, I mean, when you gonna get it? It's time out for these diaper wipes. People's lives are being destroyed and we're trying to not hurt people's feelings. Please don't go to hell because they got something waiting on you. They're gonna blame you for being in hell. Okay. Let's go to this note before I get too far off on that. All right. Uh, doctrines of demons taught by false teachers. These are the things that we need to separate from and stand against. These are the things, and they're going to pull the note up. We need to separate from and stand against. All right. And this herbal, spiritual herbal detoxification uh, process that we are going on. I like making up words too, by the way. So don't y'all English folk jump on me too tough. All right, we separate from and stand against error. Doctrine of demons taught by false teachers, pastors, and those who are de-seduced and deceived. Pastors and leaders that teach no matter what you do, you're going to heaven anyway. I don't know where that heaven is. Matter of fact, I don't even know where it is. I don't even want to know where it is. I don't have nothing to do with it. Uh, pastors and leaders that teach no matter what you believe, you're going to heaven anyway. You know, and then we have this unsanctified grace teaching, which is a license to sin. That's a view of some a review of some things we covered. And we also went in scripture in uh, Corinthians 11 and we pointed out how the scripture is clear that uh, Satan has 
false ministers, false pastors, false emissaries, called apostles, uh, false bishops, false teachers. Uh, and the scripture said he masquerade uh, like an angel or a messenger of light himself. He don't come as a messenger of darkness. He come as a messenger of light. That's how he was able to infiltrate a matzah izanigad, her thought, her belief system, and ultimately also influence Adam belief system. His thought, he 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 heard the same thing she heard, but she was the one who suggested that they go that route. And he agreed with it. You see, he needed a some ground to plant his seed in, and he knew that that ground was matzah izanigad. That is the name that the father himself gave to Isha, the woman. After they committed the act of rebellion, Adam named her Hava. Hava. Okay. Uh, Rome got a hold to the translations. And the English word Eve is being used. Eve, Matzah was not an Englishman. Her name was not Eve. It does matter. Here's the thing about it, uh, primarily not culture, names are just for records, records, social, just like a social security number for records. In the Hebrew and the kingdom culture also, names reveal death. They just didn't name their children anything. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. And they would see the vision and destiny of their children, and that's how they named them. Like if you look at Yeshua, uh, one of the several meanings, one of them is salvation or deliverance, prosperity, wellness, wholeness. You look at the spelling of the word Yeshua, each letter word is going to, a yud is creative power. He has a shin in his name, provider of peace and uh, protection. There's a high. So it's, it, it does matter. It doesn't matter to the unlearned person who is devoid of truth in their belief system. If you don't have truth in your belief system, then names don't matter. They don't matter, okay? So we just need to get educated, need to get educated. You know, so we have all of this stuff out here. Uh, Satan is behind it. And when you see somebody in error, don't stop saying, oh, see that pastor there, that, that, no, no, no. Just say, see Satan's pastor, a minister, or a singer, or however. They are hit one of his ministers, his agent. All right, let's go back to our notes. All right, so now we want to hit this one, unsanctified grace teaching. I don't, okay, unsanctified grace teaching, which is like the sin. I'm sorry, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Something that you said earlier, um, this question is for someone else as related to when you said um, things that we need to separate from and teachings, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. When a person is saying things like, well, we have all fallen short, that's one, and he without sin be the first to cast the stone. When people are using those scriptures to justify um, a compromised lifestyle. How do you talk about that? Okay, uh, that's because that, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I saw your hand because this it falls right into this unsanctified grace teaching. That those statements right there falls under this category. You know, uh, the one about we all falling short of the glory of Elohim and are in need of salvation. Now, have you been born again? Well, you don't need salvation no more. So stop talking like that. You're not falling no more. The fall is over. You see. And what was the other one? He who is without sin right. be the first to cast stone. Now, if, if you're dealing with some Pharisees that are about to stone you to death, you have a right to say that. See, the father's not a mimic. And when Yeshua taught something and was dealing with somebody, he was dealing with them. Listen, let me, let me get it this way, this way. Okay, once we are born again, our spirit is regenerated, okay? Then our mind, our will and emotion, which is 
three primary functions of our soul is being uh, sanctified on a daily basis. Your mind, will, and emotion. Mind is being transformed through the renewal process. We choose to submit our wills. He said, crucify uh, the emotions. The emotions are being crucified. They are being controlled and crucified. They, we are alive, but yet we're dead to responding to certain emotional triggers because the word governs us and not emotions. Okay. Now, once we get born again, our spirit is holy. F-E-M 424. He who created us, created us in true righteousness and holiness, making reference to our spirit. And then over in Yochanan, he says, if a person say they are without sin, they lie. All right. What did he mean there? We are all being sanctified daily in our soul, not our spirit. He wasn't talking about the spirit, talking about the soul. Now, the one save, always save uh, people uh, says that, you know, the scripture say, if we born again, we're uh, children of Elohim, his seed remain in us and we cannot sin. He's talking about the spirit. Our born again spirit cannot commit an act of rebellion. Our mind, our souls, our wills, we still can choose to sin. And, pe and the same folk believe that are the main ones that are sinning and using it as a cop out not to live holy, saying once saved, always saved. You see, so uh, that thought ties everything I just mentioned, that thought ties into all of that with a person who have been indoctrinated and have not been educated properly with kingdom precepts and allowed those precepts to become their concepts and their belief system, their ideals to be tied to truth, you see. Now, the scripture teaches more about we how not to stumble. He said, if you do these things, he talked about that in Cape, I believe. He said, if you do these things, you will never stumble. you never get offended. You'll never sin. All right. The scripture says, strive for perfection or maturity. All right. So when you look at what the scripture teach versus certain verses people pull out who are uneducated and have been indoctrinated with a weak doctrine, they outweigh that by tons. Yeshua never, ever condone, glorify or encourage a sinful lifestyle, nor did he encourage weakness. He, he did not sin, period. Zero. So the, even the one about the stone, he was dealing with a woman and a man who were caught. Both of them were caught. And he was dealing with the scribes who were in sin by way of the religion that they were teaching and the traditional thoughts that they carried and the tradition they were putting into people. So when he said that, he hit them to the core and he dropped the stones. They were getting ready to kill him because the law said that. They, they was getting ready to, to uh, do what the law, their traditional law required. But they knew that if they had broken the law, then and if they had did that, then that would have demanded that they be stoned. So all of that have to be put in there. You can't just, because a person, is willfully sinning, rebellion, committing an act of rebellion, and then going to fall back on some of those religious props. That doesn't work. You know a tree by the fruit, the words, as well as the lifestyle. So all of that stuff there is, 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 is a product of unsanctified grace teaching. And so where's under the blood is under grace. You know, the Lord understand. No, what you mean? He, how can you tell the creator of everything he understands? I mean, I mean, how, how can that thought be fixed or fabricated in a person's mind that the Lord understands? That's a person who don't know him. He is infinite. He don't need to understand nothing. He is infinite, you know. So all of this stuff is religious doctrine and is a product of unsanctified grace teaching. All right. And, in Norm and here's the other one. And anytime you see it in Hollywood and 
celebrities and actors saying stuff, you know it's wrong. Don't judge me. By the simple fact they saying it, it's wrong. What they saying is did not come from Holy Spirit. They're taking a translation and part of a verse. If you read the whole thing, Yeshua said, get the jump out of your life. And once you do that, you go back and you deal with your brother or sister. When he was teaching and he was telling them, don't make a final decision relative to no one based on your opinions and what you think. And at that time, he was teaching people who had stuff in them that needed to be dealt with. How can you correct and straighten somebody else out and you in the mess? He didn't leave it there. Read Matthew 7. He said, go get all of this stuff out of your, I, the word I mean mind. Get all this junk out of your mind. Then you go back and you deal with them. But don't try to deal with them and you get all this stuff going on in your own life. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That's what he was saying. And you're making a, pronouncing a final verdict on the thing and you don't have a right to do that. Uh, the scripture said we are going to judge Malachim's called angels. So, you know, all that falls under unsanctified grace teaching. And people say that when they live in willful, willfully sinning and they don't want the Holy Spirit saying anything to them. Because most people think the Holy Spirit can come down and say, oh, oh Bernadette, stop doing that. Don't you see that? No, he's talking to through that person. He is talking through that person that he is in to you. Yeshua is in heaven. You're not coming to earth to tell you not to sin. People will say it. He got it in his word. We know his precepts and his principles and his laws. It was a violation of the law. And if he said in his word to flee sexual immorality and you tell somebody to do that who are committing sexual immorality and they say, don't judge me. Listen, I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what the law is for our government that you are in violation of. You are criminal. So you telling me you want to go to jail. Well, go on then. You know, that's another big one. That come on unsanctified grace teaching, which is a license to continue to commit acts of rebellion. A better word for sin is rebellion. Is rebellion. All right, let's put, matter of fact, uh, while we're in here, this person development, we're going to go to scripture and we're going to pull up a verse with the word uh, grace in it. And we're going to look at the original word for grace uh, from the original writings, the Hebrew. And we're going to look at a word uh, from the Greek translation. You, you all do know that the English translation came from the Greek translation, not the Hebrew. And everybody been told that the uh, Greek language uh, the uh, the Hebrew, the Messianic scriptures were written in Greek first. That never did make sense to me. Before I went to the seminary, it didn't make sense to me. Before the Holy Spirit showed me that wasn't right, it didn't make sense to me. I'm just a simple person. That don't. I'm not going to write all those books in a language. Uh, we here in Memphis. Now, I'm going to write all these books for everybody in Memphis to live by in Chinese. But because of Rome ruling the belief system, people believe it. And we are proving it over and over again that that's not factual, it's not true. That's the reason we study from the original language. That's where you find the original thoughts. That's where you find truth. There are over 58 verses added in was called the New Testament. The New Testament was coined by Bishop Melito of Sardis, a Roman Catholic bishop, not the Holy Spirit, not an emissary, not a sage, not a pastor, not a master teacher, a government appointed Catholic bishop. Old Testament, the same thing. There is no Old Testament. The old or the previous covenant contained ritual and ceremonial law that was put there in order to hold everyone who believed in a place 
in paradise in the earth called Abraham bosom until Yeshua came in the earth and paid the eternal price of debt for man, thereby leading them out of the earth and everybody from that point on being able to be placed back in our position of righteousness, receive our dominion back and get born again. That's the only part that we are not governed by is ritual, ceremony, and traditional law. There are kingdom law, kingdom precepts, kingdom principles from Barishti to all the books that were left out all the way through Revelation and all the other books that were left out. You, you see how Caesar been ruling? And I mean, if we didn't know, we didn't know. That happened around 150 AD. The scriptures never were referred to by New Testament. They were referred to as the Messianic, Mashiach, Hamashiach writings. Scripture is another word for writings. We got to get Caesar out of there. He, he got to go. Bro, You with both of your earrings, you got to go. Both of them got to go. All right. Now, <laughs> I'm not buying no bad with your earrings, you know. I know Caesars wore both earrings because he wouldn't be denied male nor female. They have what they want, whoever they, they want to have, have your husband and your wife. And you wouldn't say nothing. All right. Now, uh, let's look at these words. Let's look at these words uh, and let's find out this English word grace, how we wind up. How do we get to the point of thinking that this means you can do whatever you want to do, still go to heaven? Because that's what the one save always save people teach. Come on, uh, DJ, let's let's pull up, uh, go to the interlinear. I already gave him instruction. He's going to pull up because um, we want to show it to you. Show it to you in the language. Um, Minister Taker, put it up in a minute. All right, now. And while he's doing it, he's getting, here we go. Here we go. All right, now here it is in the Messianic, uh, one of the, uh, the book of Lucas. And this is one of the books of the Messianic writing. They left book, books out of that too. Now you see this word grace is the Greek word haris. Okay. That's where the English word come from. Haris is not a Hebrew word. So we need to find the Hebrew word for uh, the English word grace. Now he's going to go into the Hebrew and get, uh, all you do is go to what they call the Old Testament. It's not the Old Testament. Just go to those previous, those other books. You pull up the word either favor or the word grace, and you'll see the Hebrew word hand. So let's look at that. He's going to pull one of those up. Now, while he's doing it, hariz, or harizma was one of the requirements in order to be part of the ecclesia, the political cabinet that supported Caesar. Hold on, let's put it down for a minute. Let me let me deal with this. Because I, I know what the lexicons say today. They tried to change stuff, but when it was written in the, uh, uh, the Greek language that they used back then, and the word they used back then, I'm going to give you the definition that the former translations use when they use the word grace hariz or harisma and if you check this it may be still online greek theory of leadership you you checked it out now here it is in order to be a part of ecclesia which is the political cabinet for caesar another word for caesar mean lord we still talking about rome they are the ones everything caesar said they put it in writing and made it happen. Everything he said, they were his cabinet, his congressmen, his senators. But in order to be a part of that political called out group who supported Caesar or Lord, you had to be wealthy and you had to have charisma, a haris, which means gifted by the gods. See, like Ray said, stick my finger. Gods. And <laughs> y'all Baptist folk remember, you remember. 
but you had to be gifted by the gods. You also had to uh, uh, look, you had to be Yosef in skin tone color. You had to have thin nose, thin lips, brown eyes and blue eyes, and you had to be gifted and chosen by the gods. That was a qualification to be a part of Ecclesia. That's why I keep telling you the word church is a racial superior supremacist word. It was derived from a racial supremacist word that you had to meet those qualifications to be a part of Ecclesia and the word church come from Ecclesia. Well, what? no, I know you did not know that. That's why you have so much racial hatred within congregations and churches still today. Sundays are the most segregated time in the world still today. Every time you say that word, you constantly give that spirit permission to continue on with his presence. Somebody need to pay me for telling you the truth. All right, now, so that's where that word came from. Gifted by the gods, gifts that were given by the gods to certain individuals. Now let's look at the original word. And there it is right there. The English word favor, and you'll see it translated great sometime. But this is the correct English translation for the original word for uh, what was translated grace. And it's new, het noon. But Noah found hen, favor, or grace, because they're synonymous in the, uh, the meaning. Excuse me. Now, the keys of revelation is the lexicon that Yeshua gave us himself to properly get and validate interpretation of scripture, of words in the writings of Elohim that he gave to us. So you have het, noon, het, um, several meanings. It means to separate, but not only separate, it means to separate as a right of ownership and bring close to. It also means to protect, you see, het. Uh, there is a tab in the spelling of the word head. You just see the letter, but that letter head is a word. And tab has to do with being identified with being in covenant with. See, when we received salvation, we became in covenant with Holy Spirit, with Elohim. And now we identified as an ambassador, a son of Elohim. That is where identity lies at. And the word noon means to inherit or inherit tons. It also means the seed of life, sonship. When we got born again, we became sons of Elohim and we received the inheritance of eternal life, and we have been brought close to him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Therefore, we are protected by him. We are his property. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price, and we are his temple, and the Holy Spirit dwells. Man, I'm getting happy just working on this, this original word for favor or grace. That's what it means. All right. So when Moshe, uh, I mean, not Moshe, but Noah found favor, that means the father brought, had brought him close to him and took ownership of Noah because of his faith and him trusting in the word that the father gave him and building an ark in the middle of a desert when everybody was critiquing him and criticizing him, cussing him out and all of these things, but he kept building. Mm, 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 oh, me and oh my. All right, you can take it down. So now you see that when you deal with the original, the anointing validates. I don't have to speak, well, this is what harassment in the Greek and it means grace and, you know, be so, uh, you know, and brainwash people. I'll do that. Y'all sense that anointing when it was, we was teaching it and telling you what that word actually mean. And, and you, you got deliverance yourself because now you know you're not your own. 
and you've been bought with a price and he is your protector protector and your your provider and he is the one who give you peace because we belong to him favor is on me everywhere i go favor is on me everywhere i go the father's provisions are with me and own me his protection is with me and own me it's it's a difference now you're not thinking about getting away with committing rebellion and sin. You're thinking about who he is when you know what the word actually means. So there's this teaching out here is what I call unsanctified and unsanctioned. And all the, the, the people that's on TV and, and, and get all the television time, they all teach the same thing, just like Caesar did in Rome, brain, brainwashing everyone and bringing them, holding them, continually under the Roman Catholic doctrine. And he called it faith conference and this conference and this conference and generals in the body of Christ. There ain't no such thing as a body of Christ. Shay O wasn't even talking about that. He wasn't even talking about that. And generals, and you got to go to this conference to learn faith. You got to go hear this man. I thought the Holy Spirit was the teacher. Now, why I got to go get on a ticket? Why I got to do all that? Now the Holy Spirit have confined himself to a certain place, a certain city at a certain time for you to learn something. The devil is a liar and ain't no truth in it. All right. So I want to show you that. Now let's go to this next note. This next note. This next note. Let's, let's, let's deal with this. That, that's, the, that's favor. That, now get that in your, your belief system and before you commit an act of rebellion, you're going to think about, wait a minute, I've been brought close to the heart of my father. He have called me to be special and unique. I'm royal. I'm chosen. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. But if you think about it from the Greek folk, and their thought, the Greco-Roman theology, you're going to do it. Well, great. It's under grace. Let me go. On, let me go and hit this, man. It's under grace. Yeah. I ain't, one time ain't going to hurt nothing. But we get married in anyway, You might as well. Well, one little drink, <laughs> one drink don't hurt nothing. And you sanctified, singing holy song. Boy, let them put that other song up there. You out grinding the grinders. I watch this happen. I mean, just, just you know, and this, and, you know, I'm in relationship, you know, with the apostle and so on, so this. And then they throw that song on. I said, now, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the heck on. Now, where's that apostle? At? I need to check him out too. <laughs> Cause you grinding, you loosen, loose it. I said, well, did you see? Did you, did, did you wait? Wait now. I, I understand a little bit, but man, man, you own that thing, boy. I mean, just my goodness. No, no, no. That's 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 hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. Let's go to our, our next note. So you know, integrity. Let me tell you about. Let me tell you what holiness. Another word for holiness. A key word that is synonymous in meaning with the word holy or holiness is integrity. It's being the same way all the time. I don't care what music come on, you're not popping and jumping. You're the same way. The Holy Spirit is not like that, you know. Just because everybody else drinking, that don't mean you drink. Because everybody's lighting up, that don't mean you lighten up. You see? Why? Because you're a person of integrity. Holiness is your lifestyle in which if you don't possess holiness, you won't see the Lord to all y'all graceful. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it and see where you wind up. All right, now uh, let's go to this next one. Beware of the serpent's poison. Let's, let's wrap it up on this one here. Oh, man, we got another good one coming up. Uh, detoxification of colonization. That's our next one we're getting into. Beware of the what? Serpent's poison. Uh, come on, Audrey, read that for us. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Dr. Larry. Um, it says, beware of the serpent's poison. Yehuda, four. For certain individuals, I'm sorry, uh, there we go. I just need to adjust, make an adjustment. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago, 
have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of Elohim into a license for immorality and deny Yeshua the Messiah, our only sovereign and Lord. Now, they pervert the favor, the hand of Elohim into a license for immorality. Just got through shaking around a pole with a thong on. I just want to thank the Lord for protecting me. That's the Lord. That's the Lord right there. You see it? You see the serpent? That's the one they're talking about. The uh, BET Awards, all these, the Gospel Awards, Dove Awards, all this stuff. You see women getting on the stage, they breast open and all this kind of stuff. They making reference to the old serpent, the God of sexual immorality, the God of money, the God of gold. You can take it down. The God of unsanctified wealth, unsanctioned wealth. Don't, don't get the script mixed up. Never get the script mixed up. And because of influence, people fall for it all day long. They falling for it. All right. So he says, secretly slipped in among you. Secretly. Now, if you read the book of Yehuda, and that's the right name, he wasn't an Englishman, Yehuda. And if you look at that name, Yehuda, you, Yeshua came out of the tribe of what? Thank you. All right. Now, um, what you, these mixers, the Nicolaitans, the deeds and the doctrine, that, that the Nicolaitans were notorious for mixing, mixing cultures. You can't mix culture. You can't do it. Uh, I had a, a, one elder, I didn't know Dana, but he was with our ministry years ago. And I was sharing with him some things relative to music. And he said, man, I don't, uh, that's, that's, that's massive from what you're saying, Pastor. It's too massive to deal with. I said, there's nothing too massive for the word. Nothing impossible with the Lord. This the culture that we are in, that we don't teach and preach. We don't do that. And we don't condone it. Yeah, but what you do with this song? What you do with that song? Then they want to get in all that. Because people are looking for a way. If you got sin in you, you're always looking for a way to do what's in you already. Come on, your code. Let's go to your code. Let's go to your code. Let's just look at scripture. Uh, is it uh, your code uh, 1 and 12? Let's go to your code. Y'all call him James. His name is not James. It's Yaakov or Jacob or Yaakov. So we're going to give the credit back. We're going to give, give these biblical characters, these characters in scripture and these people. We, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't capture you and force you into labor. You can have your name back. Y'all welcome. Blessed is the one. Come on. Uh, uh, Who uh, perseveres. Mm -hmm. under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that Yahweh has promised to those who love him wait hold on now hold on now where did you get that from having stood the test why well, I got to stand a test if I'm saved anyway care what I do now some other <laughs> some other wrong here See, like they used to say it back in the day some other is wrong. If blessed is the one who preserves, what? Okay, what if I don't preserve? And I'm saved in a way because I didn't preserve and, and if I didn't stand the test, I'm still saved. See, that's how fat that lie is out there. Come on, read. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that Yahweh has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say Elohim is tempting me. For Elohim cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. All right, so the unsanctified grace teaching 
was produced by people who think like this. They actually got something in them they want to do. And they'll look for any route to validate their wrongdoing. So when you and I get into something, it's simply telling us what's in us, what's in my belief system. Our belief system is talking to us every day. This is why it's difficult to expect. Let me, not, not, I, won't, I won't use the word difficult. We should not expect transformation in no one who have previous strongholds that they're unwilling to release, physically or spiritually. It's not going to happen. Those desires inwardly first have to be dealt with. It's going to come up. And when a door of opportunity presents itself, there it is. There it is right there. I've, I've, I've witnessed too many people laughing about dying. Laughing about destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Father said, if you destroy my temple, I'm going to destroy you. Laughing about things like this. Well, you got to die from something. <laughs> Please don't go to the Father's heaven. You won't be able to handle the judgment that's going to be laid down. You see, um, we was looking at somebody and they need some help. And then I looked at their plate. I said, my goodness, my goodness. Oh, me, oh, my. Wow, I'm getting sick just looking at it. I think I want to go repent and fast just looking at it. Just, just it's, it's a pitch of syrup. My goodness, my goodness. And then you say, from what? I wonder. So we can never blame no one or blame the Father. We have to look at it and say, you know what? Thank you, Father, Holy Spirit, for bringing that light on, turning that switch on. This thing is in me. I, I know it's been there. Now, rather than let it lead me and come to fruition and bring a separation, that's what Def is talking about. I'm willing to get this out. We have to exchange ideas. You don't have to go, go to no, no, no consecration, holy anointing service, nothing like that. All you got to do is make a choice. Use the most powerful tool that's in every human being, and that's choice, and say, Holy Spirit, forgive me. I want this out of me. I'm making an exchange for truth rather than continue to possess this lie. It's over. And it's just like that. It's done deal. The law of conformity go into operation right then. And the conviction will stay with you. You don't need, you don't need nobody else. No more. You don't have to go to no more sheets conference. No more. <laughs> Listen, uh, we're gonna stop right there because we wanna. Uh, I wanna hear you all, the illumination you get uh, from uh, this word as Lord has confirmed His word. So we're gonna stop there and we're gonna uh, just let everyone know uh, that you, anytime you can participate, even we have in person meetings every week. We meet on Sundays on the Gregorian calendar uh, based on our. Um, uh, venue, venue is not based on Constantine or what Rome said do in terms of when we meet or assemble. Uh, none of that. But we meet on weekends uh, and all our information you'll find on our Facebook page as well as our website and social media platforms. And we're not traditional. And well, if you don't take them to the cross, you didn't do nothing. Okay, once they get there, then what, Cletus? You gonna holler at them some more? People need teaching. Now, if this, if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, I encourage you to listen to him. Exchange thoughts, change the way that you think. The thing that Yeshua did, the process, everything he went through was for the sole purpose of us having the availability to coming back to the creator, our father in heaven and being born again and then come into the knowledge of truth so i know uh, several of you listen to us now you had enough of the the religious organizations all that we're not a religious organization we don't believe that you can just keep sinning and sinning and go to heaven we don't teach that mess if you're willing and ready to be disciplined make a commitment to the laws of the kingdom his principles his precepts 
you ask him to forgive you, he'll do it. And you start your life over again. I encourage you to do